A day we're fine, they're going to be close to an agreement, a day we're not. Is this just not the nature of negotiations? I think it's the nature of negotiations and I think the Europeans um, seem to enjoy this um, process and it's not just in Brexit but with everything they, they do, eventually they stay up all night at the end and, and the deal is done. So as a, you know, as a citizen, I think it's interesting, I read all the papers this morning, as a bond investor, our, our expectation is there will be a deal uh, in, in November and it will not be that dramatic. It's important that they're not going to agree a great, a great deal or the future trading stuff. Um, they are going to have to uh, do that later. Um, but, um, you know, I think aside from the, the headlines and the, um, the theatre, there's going to be a deal, we think, um, announced before the end of this year. And is that what is priced into the markets? I think the market is probably um, pricing a higher probability of a, a no-deal outcome mm -hmm. uh, than we would suggest. So if there's some agreement, it's not on much, but uh, you have the status quo for the next couple of years, uh, undramatic in terms of the economy, uh, there is a chance that um, it all falls apart and you have a sudden stop and you have lorries queuing up and so on and so forth uh, and that would have a significant macro impact. Our estimate would be that the, uh, the market is pricing in a higher probability of that, paying more attention maybe to the, you know, the, the theatre. Um, so uh, I think UK interest rate risk um, being uh, underweight gilts makes, um, makes <coughs> sense here. I think the level of yields is too low. Andrew, within the, in the broad sense, we're back to school, you know, back to September, back to business as usual. What's the vibrancy of London right now? Within all of this Brexit, is the ebb off London witness Deutsche Bank talking about uh, making London a branch? I don't buy it for a minute. How's London doing? <laughs> I think London's fine. They can improve the traffic and the weather. But um, in terms of the, the city, um, I think there's a lot of noise. Um, one of the car companies early on seemed to get a lot of concessions. I think other, others have seen this, and so you have a lot of um, noise. But when you look at the, um, the banks and the jobs moving away, when you look at their net additions uh, in London, they're often right. bigger numbers. In the, uh, and so I think that there will be some fragmentation. I think that there will be some, uh, some, you know, some banks are going to have to hire some people uh, elsewhere in Europe. There's implications for their costs and margins, maybe a bit for the efficiency of, um, of European capital markets. I think the baseline is um, uh, not, not a huge change to how European capital markets work. But, you know, there's a significant risk case you have to pay attention to as well. You know, here's the FT. I like that Francine showed the charts, and this is a little bit like the Guardian photo as well. But I, I get it, Andrew. This is the men, the suits and ties, and the lonely Prime Minister May and all that this morning. Okay, great. But how lonely is she? Is this just theater for the media or, you know, and it's something to worry about in September? Or if I'm an investor, do I really care about Brexit? So I think you, if you're an investor, I think there's a high probability of a not a dramatic outcome, a deal, still uncertainty over the future trading arrangements, the macro implications, fairly limited. Um, but there is a risk case you have to pay attention to. You know, look at all European negotiations. I think back to Greece, no deal, no deal, no deal. They stay up late at night and then miraculously there's a deal at the end. So uh, I guess to some extent there's managing constituencies. To some extent the Europeans may think that um, um, being tough, um, appearing nasty, um, uh, gives um, Theresa May uh, cover to, to seek a deal at home. I, I think as a, as a citizen it's fascinating as an investor there's a high probability uh, of an outcome before the end of the year, probably in November, although it doesn't answer very many questions. All the questions about the um, future trading arrangements are going to have to be sorted out. The cliff edge just moves forward to 2020. Uh, we have a viewer question, Andrew, and this is, will Brexit lead to a recession in, in the short term, regardless of the outcome of the negotiations? So I would say no. I mean, who knows? But uh, no, in the sense that... Um, uh, a uh, pushing forward, maintaining the status quo. There's no reason why this should have a big impact on the economy. I think if you have a no deal breakdown, the UK walks away, uh, then, you have, um, then you have significant um, recession risk. And then over time, when we try and figure out what this should mean in terms of our long term growth estimates, uh, we can't find a very significant um, impact. So as long as you avoid the, the sudden stop, low probability, um, but, a, but a possibility. I, I think the 
the macroeconomy um, continues on the path we've been on. But that said, the uncertainty is not helpful. Having this big uncertainty, it's going to move on for another two years. <clears throat> if you're thinking about investment decisions uh, or if you're a city firm thinking about where to be, uh, to be, um, to be based, it's, it's not helpful.